Howdy folks, I'm Dexterous Delphus, delightedly diving past dancing dolphins. I'm Amber. And here are more dancing dolphins for us to dive past, because we have a porpoise, and that porpoise is a porpoise. I was trying to do a play on words, but it, it didn't work. <laughs> Let's get started. Alright folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for refusing to pay for my friend's wedding because she uninvited me? Okay, so here's the deal. My friend, we'll call her Sarah, and I have been tight since high school. We've been through everything together. Breakup, makeups, you name it. So when she got engaged, I was over the moon for her. Fast forward to a few months before the wedding. Sarah ends up sending out invitations, and I'm psyched to see an RSVP. But then, out of nowhere, she texts me saying that she had to cut down the guest list due to budget constraints. And unfortunately, I didn't make the cut. I was devastated. I get that weddings are expensive and all, but to uninvite me after all we've been through for so long? Ouch. Well, fast forward to the wedding day. I see all these photos on social media, and it looks like a fairy tale. But here's the kicker. Sarah texts me later that week asking for money to help cover the cost of the wedding. Apparently, they went over budget, and she's asking all the guests who didn't attend to chip in. I was floored. Not only did she uninvite me, but now she expects me to foot the bill for a wedding that I didn't even go to. I told her no way, and I refused to pay a single dime. But now she's saying that I'm being selfish and unsupportive. Am I the jerk here, Reddit? Or is Sarah out of line for expecting me to pay for her mistake? And folks, there's an update as well. So let's read that one real quick. Update for Am I the jerk for refusing to pay for my friend's wedding because she uninvited me? Hey everyone, OP here with an update about refusing to pay my friend for their wedding because she uninvited me. Firstly, I want to express my gratitude to all 700 plus of you who took the time to read my story and offer your thoughts. Your support and perspective has been invaluable during this challenging time. Since my last update, there has been some significant developments. Sarah saw the post and confronted me, and things got heated. There was yelling, emotions ran high, and in the end, I made the difficult decision to go no contact with Sarah. While it was a tough choice for me to make, I realized that the toxicity in our relationship had reached a point where it was no longer healthy for either of us. Despite my initial hopes for reconciliation, it became clear that certain underlying issues in our friendship needed to be addressed and resolved before any meaningful progress could be made. Going no contact was not a decision that I made lightly, but rather one born out of necessity for my own well-being and mental health. It's never easy to distance yourself from someone you care about, but sometimes it's necessary for personal growth and healing. I want to thank everyone once again for their support and encouragement through this journey. Your words have been a source of strength and comfort during this challenging time in my life. Moving forward, I'm focused on prioritizing my self-care and surrounding myself with positive influences. While it's sad to say goodbye to a friendship that once meant so much to me, I'm hopeful that this decision will ultimately lead to greater happiness and fulfillment in the long run. Thank you all for being a part of my story and your unwavering support. Sorry, no laughing slash clown emojis. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. That was an outlandish request. Like... First of all, you should not expect anyone to finance your wedding. Like, if you and your partner cannot finance your dream wedding, you need to save up until you can or have a lower budget affair. Yeah. But if you are going to ask for contributions, why on earth would you ask for money from the people you cut from the wedding? Like, yeah. it's so rude to invite someone and uninvite someone. If your budget doesn't allow that many people, you don't invite them in the first place. So that was a really rude thing to do. But then to add insult to injury, be like, oh, yeah, but can you foot the bill for this party you didn't get to go to? Yeah, I really feel bad for poor OP here. It's clear that there have been fractures in this relationship for a long time. And whether Sarah meant to or not, she showed how much she valued OP's friendship by not inviting her to this wedding. Now, it would be a little bit different if it had been like a close knit family only affair, right? Because at that point in time, you can just be like, look, I'm really sorry, I want you there, but this is kind of going to be just a very, very small ceremony with a, just a few family members, right? Yeah. And I think that most people would be understanding about not being invited to something like that. Whereas this was a, sounds like a, an extravagant event that cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I can understand why OP would be hurt about that because it seems like they were excluded from something fancy and something that they should have been there to be by their friend's side. 
Also, it seems like OP might have regarded Sarah to be a closer friend than Sarah regarded OP, because it doesn't even sound like OP was in the bridal party originally. So, and that's a shame if OP felt like they were just kind of like hanging at that point in time. Yeah, it's definitely an unfortunate situation, and I feel really bad for OP to get her hopes up like this and then have them dashed and then rubbed into the ground, basically. Um, but, you know, I mean, at least it sounds like she's cutting this friend out of her life, and as difficult as that may be, it's probably going to be for the best. Like, you don't need someone who only sees you as a piggy bank. Yeah, pretty much. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, My boyfriend just got mad at me for starting my period. The title says it all. My boyfriend, a 34-year-old male, just got mad at me, a 28-year-old female, for starting my period today. We have been together for almost a year and a half. This literally just happened, and I really don't know what to do or how to feel. I'm in school, and he works evenings, so probably see each other once a week due to opposite schedules. I came over to his house today, we haven't seen each other in two weeks, and was happy to see him. I needed to use the restroom, and as soon as I wiped, I saw that I was starting my period. I have been having some medical issues lately, so getting my period normally is a good thing since my doctor is monitoring my cycle currently. I asked him if he could get me a tampon, and he hovered over me, clearly looking mad, gave me the tampon, and said loudly, Are you kidding me? We haven't had intimate time in two weeks, and thus then just glared at me. I felt like a child getting in trouble. I felt guilty and small. I shut the door and I started crying. When I came out of the bathroom, he looked at me and said, what's your problem? I walked past him and I sat on the couch and I began crying again, telling him how terrible he made me feel and how I can't control when I have my period. He stood over me and continued to explain to me how he has every right to be upset because now we can't have intimate time. I told him that it was good that I started my period normally because of what has been going on medically, and he just stomped off. He didn't care that he made me upset, he was just concerned about not having intimate time. I've noticed this is a pattern for him. He acts this way every single time I get my period. It's extremely hurtful. I don't know what to do. I'm sitting here on his couch and not seeing him after two weeks, wishing that I would never have driven to see him today. I shouldn't feel this way. Even right now, he's stomping around the house and won't look at me or make any kind of contact. I do not understand what I did wrong. Our relationship has definitely been rocky lately, but this kind of took things to a different level for me. I shouldn't feel guilty about starting my period. I need some advice. All right, folks, what do you think about this one? I think my advice would be dump this man. Yeah, break up. Like, if he cannot handle you having a natural bodily phenomenon, I understand that he felt a little frustrated, but that was not the way to treat your partner. Like, he should have been happy for you that you were having your period, since that's something that you've been not having re lately. Yeah, or maybe he should have gone out and bought her a tub of ice cream and, uh, you know, whatever, and a Lifetime movie or something like that, and, you know, cuddled with her on the couch and watched some stuff, right? Well, exactly. It seems like he is using his girlfriend purely for adult pleasure mm -hmm. and not seeing her as a person with her own needs and... You know, it's it's really sad. Yeah, it is sad. It is sad. I think that OP needs to get into a relationship where someone's not going to just treat them like they're there to satisfy their own personal needs. And again, like, it's understandable that he's frustrated and it's understandable that he, you know, has his own, you know, desires and what, whatnot, but he can't take that out on his partner. Right. And it makes you like think if, if OP were to stick with this man long enough to have children, like if he can't handle two weeks, oh, yeah. how would he handle the postpartum period? Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes there's tearing or surgery and all kinds of things that go on that may make it so you can't have internet time. <laughs> internet time yes. yeah i can't have intimate time for a while and uh it just i do not see a future with someone like this yeah i think that he has a lot of growing up to do and i think that he shouldn't be op's problem at this point in time but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck and that's nurse julie says is he uncomfortable with intimate time while you are on your period are you i think having intimate time while on your period is not a bad thing and WebMD says, period intimate time also can ease period symptoms. Having intimate time while having your period may relieve cramps because 
intimate activity releases endorphins and lessens pain. Have a serious adult conversation with him if he can't handle it or disregard your feelings and medical facts that he's not worth staying with. You did nothing wrong. Love yourself and your body. You are healthy and stay positive. And OP replies, we have had intimate time on my period in the past. Due to my medical issues, I've had major amounts of cramping and pain, and it's difficult to be intimate while on my period now because it can get painful rather quickly. Thank you for your comment. And I mean, I think that's important to recognize there that this is, you know, OP has some medical issues and this is uh, important for them to take care of their medical well-being. And Ready Willingness 82 says, Red flags everywhere. Setting today's incident aside, you two are essentially in a long distance relationship. You might be geographically close to each other, but you see each other once every two weeks. I don't think this man sees you as anything other than a woman that he has intimate time with every two weeks. You might not even be the only person he's being intimate with. Whatever the case, his association that you're liaison every two weeks with having adult time and he appears to be angry that he now has to spend a day with you without having intimate time. Why give him your valuable time? Go and make the most of your day and leave him to sulk like the child that he is. You really need to reevaluate this relationship. Does it mean anything to him other than the occasional intimate time? What exactly are you getting out of it? What are you hoping to get out of it in the long term? Has he ever communicated any thoughts regarding the future? Maybe now is a good time to ask him where he sees this relationship going. If it's just a conjugal arrangement, are you happy with that? And OP replies, thank you for this feedback. I definitely have a lot to think about and sort through. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here. And Amber, she has a joke. What might you call cosmetics gifted after an argument? Well, I would call them something to be very cautious about because you never know what they did to those cosmetics. They could have poisoned them. <laughs> I mean, fair point. Makeup, makeup. Oh, that makes sense. And I have Mega Mint. I like how Amber's like, let me write a wholesome joke. And Brian's like, murder. <laughs> Well, I was, you know, calibrating my uh, punchlines to be suitable for a horror writer. <laughs> all right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Ma Manic Monday. Wow, folks, we've started the week already again. It's too bad, but we've got to keep going. Well, and we get daylight savings on top of that. Yeah, daylight savings. Yeah, if this video is showing up an hour early for you for some reason, then uh, or hour late, I'm not sure which it is, <laughs> then uh, you know why now. Daylight savings time. Our incompetent government has once again failed us to uh, pass any f meaningful legislation when it comes to daylight savings time. So we are at their mercy yet for another year. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please have it a new take on an old adage. If your partner blames you for having periods, throw the whole person away. I think I think that works. I think that works. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.